Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, December 5th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Spent some time today following up on an observation that I wrote up uh, last week about a pro-Russian hacktivist group going after SharePoint vulnerabilities. I looked at a particular IP address that was used in these scans and, well, they have changed their targets. They're now looking for a number of other vulnerabilities, like, for example, leaked environment files and uh, other well, essentially uh, credential files that may accidentally leak also exposed admin APIs. So wrote up a little bit more about this. A couple uh, vulnerabilities that sort of stuck out that they're looking for. One looked like a directory traversal vulnerability in a captive portal that's often installed with OpenWRT, the open source uh, router software. Name of the portal is No Dog Splash. Haven't seen this particular vulnerability documented. Doesn't mean that it's real and uh, just some zero day or so. Could be just some attempt uh, to exploit things that don't really work. There's also uh, some checks for like cold fusion admin URLs. And then another one that sort of stuck out was scans for an artifacts file in MLflow. MLflow describes itself as a unified platform to navigate the maze of model development, deployment, and management for machine learning. So certainly interesting pieces of software being exploited here. Also identified a couple other IP addresses that are likely associated with that activity because the URLs that are being scanned by this particular host and then also the other hosts that I saw are reasonably unique. There are not a lot of hosts really scanning for these specific vulnerabilities, which again could mean that, uh, well, these exploits actually uh, don't really work all that well. There are also some interesting geolocation uh, challenges here that I outlined. Uh, the IP addresses are assigned to a ISP that provides uh, low-cost uh, hosting services. It appears to be sort of headquartered in England, but really has a footprint all over uh, Europe uh, with sort of some significant uh, footprint in Russia. So not necessarily all that obvious where these particular IP addresses are located. They have been notified and uh, so far really no reaction here, which again is not terribly unusual for these low-cost hosting providers. And talking about abuse requests and uh, other issues where you're trying to notify the owner of a particular system or domain, ICANN is setting up a new system now called RDRS for Registration Data Request Service. This is apparently a centralized system, and I have to look at it in more detail, where you're able to basically request information about domains in a more automated fashion. Now, in the past, we used to have WIS, of course. WIS hasn't really been all that useful uh, because a lot of the data is anonymized uh, these days. What this system basically does is if you want to send a message uh, to a particular uh, domain owner, you can use uh, this RDRS system. It will automatically route it to the respective registrar who can then forward it. Uh, that's at least how I see this working to uh, the particular domain owner or maybe uh, take action if uh, there is some kind of abuse problem. So it should simplify the entire process. You don't have to first figure out who is the registrar, how to exactly contact that registrar. Every registrar sort of has a little bit of different system here. Uh, this system predominantly applies to the generic top-level domains, does not so much apply to the more traditional top-level domains because they're governed differently uh, with the generic top-level domains. I can sort of has more power in enforcing them uh, to use a system like this. And then we got a couple of uh, patches, vulnerabilities. Uh, first of all, Google released the December update for Android. It fixes one critical zero-click remote code execution flaw. These, of course, are the ones where you basically just receive a message with no user interaction. The attacker is able to exploit uh, 
the vulnerability and execute code. There are a total of 85 vulnerabilities being addressed in these updates. And then we got an update for GitLab as well. Number of sort of medium vulnerabilities. There are two high ones that, uh, of course, stick out. One is a cross-site scripting vulnerability and a regular expression denial of service uh, vulnerability. The second one that's that's also with severity of high is uh, approach escalation vulnerability, where members with the admin group member permission can add members with a higher role. Apply the patch, but nothing really super urgent here. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening. Thanks for subscribing. And as always, thanks for leaving reviews in your favorite podcast platform and talk to you again tomorrow.